In this video, we're going to show how we can use a simple HTML client with our RESTful API. There are likely, in an enterprise, to be web applications that will need access to enterprise-wide functionality. And typically, we would have a RESTful API that provides access to that functionality. And then the web applications, which are HTML-based, can interact with the RESTful APIs. So in a Spring Boot web application, we'll find that we will have HTML forms and they will interact with web controllers in the web application. And we can set it up so that the web controllers then send requests to RESTful APIs and then receive data back from the API and display that data in another HTML view. So we're going to focus on this very simple application in which we have an initial form where the user will type a sentence and then click the button, which will then cause this sentence to be sent to a RESTful API. The API will do the counting and return a result. And the web application will receive that result and display it on a second view. Now, this isn't a very complicated application, but it illustrates very nicely the mechanisms involved in terms of communication between web application and RESTful API. And so there are going to be two applications, a web application and a RESTful application. Now, if you're running them on the same computer, they can't use the same port. So we'll keep the RESTful API on port 8080 and we'll set up the web application so that it uses port 8081. So let's take a look first of all at the RESTful API. Here's our project and we're going to use a REST controller. That REST controller has a path and we've got a method called count vowels. We're making this a post mapping, so the request body will simply be the sentence that is of type string. And its job will be to count all of the vowels in that sentence. So what I'm using here is a tree map whose key is of type string. And as you can see, this, the key values are A, E, I, O, and U, and an integer object as the value which is initialized to zero. Having declared and created the tree map, I'm then inserting five values, one for each of the vowels. I'm using a tree map rather than a hash map because the tree map will sort the objects, in this case, the integers, into the order of the keys, whereas a hash map doesn't sort in that way. So this little bit here just counts every vowel in the sentence and increments the counter, the appropriate counter in the tree map. And then I need to return an object. Unfortunately, I can't just return the tree map. So I've set up a, another class called vowels that basically just holds the tree map. I've got a couple of constructors and a get method and a set method. So that allows me then to use this tree map as the parameter for the new vowels object, and then I return that object. So that's the very simple REST API. And what will happen, of course, is that the web application is going to send the sentence to this endpoint. It will do the counting and return an object with those counts in there. Don't forget this is all done with JSON as we discussed in the previous video. Now let's turn our attention to the web application. This is a little bit more involved. As you can see here, we're going to include not just the web controller that is going to receive requests from the HTML form, but we also need to have some HTML forms. So these are down in the templates that are inside the resources. 
And we also need some other objects. You'll recognize vowels. That's to receive the data from the RESTful API. And these others are used in conjunction with the HTML forms. And we'll look at that in a few moments. So the sentence class is really just to represent a sentence. Therefore, all we need is a field for the text, a couple of constructors, and a get and a set method. Now this class is going to be used as a representation of the text box in the form where the user does the typing. We'll see how that gets linked in a little bit. So let's take a look at this in the IntelliJ project. Let's start off with our view. We can see that it's a, an HTML file. It's got this namespace which is basically a link to the time leaf library and we've got this prefix there th so we're, we're saying we want to refer to this time leaf library by the prefix th so down here for example th colon and then an element from that library another one and another one how does this all work well the forms action is just set to hash we're specifying the time leaf action to be, and then we're setting that up to be an endpoint in our web controller. And we'll look at that in a few moments. We've got an object that we're going to be setting as a sentence object. Remember the sentence class has just got the text field with a couple of constructor methods and a get and a set method. Let's look at what happens when this view is first requested. There will be a GET request sent to the controller. Here we go. Here's our web controller. Notice that it's just at controller. And our endpoint for vowel count when it is a GET mapping is simply going to be given by the framework a thing called a model. Now, this is a representation of the view that has just been requested. So what we're going to do is add to that model an attribute that we're going to call sentence. And it's actually a new sentence object. Now, this name is the name that is used here. So when we first request the view, for index.html there will be a get mapping sent to that endpoint the model is already set up by the framework and we add the sentence object calling it sentence and then we return the name of the next view to display which is going to be index so by the time we have this all displayed on the web browser there is an object called sentence and we can link to its properties. And this is easily done when we have in the HTML an input text field. We can bind that to the text property in sentence. Now, what's a property? It's a combination of a field with a corresponding get and set method. What we're saying then is whatever the user types in this text box, we want that to be added or set in the text property of this sentence object. So when the submit button is clicked, the sentence object that has now been updated with the user's input is going to be posted back to the controller. And so this is why we have a get mapping for vowel count and a post mapping for vowel count. So the same endpoint, but in the first instance, we use the get to obtain the necessary attributes for our form to populate. And then in the post, we're going to put in an attribute, a model attribute that is linked to the sentence. So here in the get, we create a new sentence and in the post we receive that sentence duly populated with the data that came from the user and so now what we can do is send this object to the rest api 
And the way that we contact a REST API is by using this REST template builder. And all we're going to do is just build and post for object. Put in the URL of the REST API endpoint, pass the data, and this is going to be the type of data that we expect to come back from the API. Let's just review that again. That is the API endpoint that we want to contact. This is the data that we are posting. And this is the type of data that we expect to receive back from the API. So that sentence dot get text is just going to get the string that is sent over to the API. There it is. It's coming in here. The vowels will be counted. And then we're returning a vowels object containing that tree map. That will come back to here. That's of the correct type. And therefore it will be stored in here. So now we have got from the API the count of all the vowels in a vowels object. And so what we can do, here we go, there's a model. This is the model for the next view. So what we'll do is add the vowels to a vowel count result. Let's take a look at this. It's an object that we've written. Here's our original sentence. Here's the count of the vowels with the corresponding constructors and get and set methods. And so what we'll do is create a vowel count result with the sentence that we were given and the count of the vowels that we got back from the API. That's all added into the attribute with the name vowel count result. And then we tell the framework the next view to display is result. So it goes to result HTML. Again, we're making use of time leaf. And in this one, all we want to do is to output the information that we have received and that has been counted and been given to us by the API. So you can see here then that we're going to access the vowel count result. Now that name is what came to us or was set here when we added that attribute to the model. So the model is automatically available. We can access that object. We can get the sentence from it. And so what we'll end up with, let's assume that the sentence was the cat sat on the mat. We will have the sentence, single quote, the cat sat on the mat, single quote, has the following vowels. And then we've just got a table in which we display each of the vowels and its count by iterating through the tree map. And so what we're doing here is having each entry in that entry set. We're going to output the entry key and output the entry value. This is how it all comes together from the user's point of view. There's the text field that is bound to the sentence object. The user types the cat sat on the mat. That gets put into the sentence object. We then click on the submit and the sentence object is sent first to the web controller. And then it will bundle that up into a post request that is sent off to the RESTful API. The RESTful API does all the counting, puts that into a vowels object, sends that back to the web controller. The web controller puts it into another object and sends that object to the next view, the result view. And the result view will then get the sentence text to put into that paragraph and it will get the tree map and for each of the entries in the tree map, display the key and the value, key and value and so on. Now, when it comes to running our application, we've got to do this in the right order. Because the web application will contact the RESTful API, we need to make sure that that API is running. So we'll start that first, and that's going to be on port 8080. We want the web application 
not to be on port 8080, which is the default, because our RESTful API is using that port. So we need to change the web application to another port. And that is done in the application properties file, which we can find under the resources folder. There it is. And that's all we've got to do. Server.port equals 8081. And so when the application runs, that means that the web application will be on port 8081. So there's no conflict of ports on the same computer that we're running both of these on. So have a go at doing that. See how it works for you. You might want to do some background reading. I would suggest you take a look in a bit more detail at Spring Boot Timeleaf and see what other features are available to you.